thoughts, all those daily concerns that absorb us so. And so this morning we ask that you might help us to set aside those concerns and for this brief time to be at peace here in this sanctuary surrounded by those whom we care about, who care about us, and by such joy as we celebrate. May our hearts and our minds be cleared so that we might hear afresh these ancient words and find for us truths for this day. In Christ's name, amen. Our Old Testament scripture this morning is taken from the prophet Isaiah, from chapter 42, the fifth through the seventh verse. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Thus says, the, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to, to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind and to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. And our New Testament lesson is taken from 1 Peter. The second chapter, beginning with the second verse. Like newborn infants long like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you've tasted that the Lord is good. Come to us, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious. In God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture See, I am laying in Zion a stone. A chosen, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous Light. Once you were not a people. Now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. So this morning, I have a question for you. How many of you have ever visited the Ancestry.com website? Or perhaps one of the slew of others that come up so that you are able to search for your roots, your 
history for your heritage. If you Google finding my ancestors, you would be amazed at all of the websites that are available to do just that. And it just appears that that's a very hot topic these days. I have a friend who decided for Christmas this past year that he would give his two adult children um, the price of a DNA search on Ancestry.com. So he wrapped up the paperwork or whatever. I haven't done it. Anyway, that Christmas morning, the whole family was gathered together, and they were opening presents, and the two adult children opened their presents, and then they kind of looked at their father with a strange look on his face. And when he opened his present, guess what? He had money to research DNA on Ancestry.com. They'd done the exact same thing for him. I haven't heard the results of that yet. I'm going to be interested to know. Anyway, I know that most of you must have seen or heard this ad. Now, I only know it as being on CNN, but I, and I don't remember the woman's name at all. All I know is that she sent off her DNA and she heard back from Ancestry.com and we are left with two ponderously deep thoughts. She likes to drink coffee and she's Italian. Okay, I mean, life-changing, right? <laughs> Along that line this morning, but certainly not to that degree, let me say that this is a most interesting day. For we are discovering that many more of us have Scottish ancestry more than we might have imagined. Even Jack... Well, not even, including Jack. <laughs> Listen, we got to be nicer to him. He's got royalty in his lineage. Anyway, many, many, many of us can claim some form of a Scottish heritage. My own heritage is the clan Drummond, and I'm wearing a rather warm scarf <laughs> from, uh, the Drummond, from the Drummond heritage, my mother was a drumming, and that's the side the clan of the clan we come from. It's interesting to discover new things about one another, right? But we're here this morning to celebrate much, much more than uncovering a fact or two about one another's heritage. We are gathered here today amid all of this pageantry to celebrate our truest heritage, the essence of who we are. The truth is, somewhere in every one of us, there's a longing to know clearly who we are, to search for pieces from the past that help us form who we are today, to draw on that past, to give us, to create for us some sense of belonging and of meaning and give that to our existence. In essence, we want to be able to say, this is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is what defines me. I mean, even the most self-aware among us still longs at times to know oneself more deeply and to define oneself more clearly and to understand the purpose of one's existence, the reason and the goal for which we move through our days this desire to uncover, discover, meaning is so strong in us that it actually spills beyond our individual lives and into communities as we come together. For in that community, soon as one, they will begin to seek to delineate a history and apply it 
to their present life together. And so we come to this Sunday's Kirkin of the Tartans. I encourage you to read the piece that is printed in your bulletin setting out the history of this service. You may be surprised to discover that this service is actually American-born. It's the product of the Reverend Dr. Peter Marshall when he was serving, and the St. Andrews Society of Washington, D.C., when Dr. Marshall was serving at the New York Avenue Presbyterian Church. It was... It was somewhere between 1941 and 1943, even with all of our knowledge, we don't seem to be able to decide which date is the most accurate date, but it doesn't matter. It was, it was in that time frame. And the purpose was to symbolize a bond of unity before a common enemy as the edge of World War II pushed outward and ever closer, threatening the freedom that we cherish. Now today, we both honor and recognize the Scottish heritage from which our Presbyterian churches arose. We also honor, recognize the unity of all God's people. Indeed, the very roots of our Presbyterian heritage are anchored in the soil of Scotland. The earliest foundations of our Reformed faith are traced from those very roots. As I mentioned earlier, my own Scottish heritage is through the clan Drummond, and this is, as I mentioned, the tartan um, under which they formed. The Drummond Tartan and all the Tartans are recognizable symbols of groups of individuals who together declare, we are a people. We have identity. We have meaning. We have purpose. We are bound together as one. We are family together by love and by choice, as well as by blood. These ancient tartans are symbols of belonging to a deep, abiding bond among individuals. Today, the tartans testify also that we, though a diverse gathering of clans are bonded together as we come together to celebrate the heritage that we share as Presbyterians. But we also gather to testify to a greater truth, the truth of our unity in Christ. Though we bear many different markers of our ancestry and of our history, we are one as the people of God in Christ. And that is our true heritage. In some sense, in some sense, we might say that Christ himself bears our tartan. And it would be a tartan woven with the unbreakable threads of love and of grace, of mercy, of healing, of joy, and of hope. We gather in Christ under that banner as one people and the emptiness of the cross and the tomb become our defining ancestry. The apostle Peter speaks these words to us. Come to him like living stones, chosen and precious, 
Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a royal priesthood by and in the presence of the living Christ. The living Christ, elected and honored by God and yet rejected by human beings. I submit to you that so too that is our call. Our foundation is parallel to Christ's. We are elected and honored by God. And in the living out of our heritage, we may find ourselves also rejected by some around us. Our call is to accept, to embrace the diversity of our backgrounds, and yet to live as people transformed by the enlivening presence of God in Christ. Transformed. For in Christ, we are a royal priesthood, a spiritual building, a holy nation, God's own people. Once we were no people. Now we are God's people. Once we had no mercy. Now we have mercy. We have received mercy. Now we are God's people bound in Christ to a life of service, of gratitude, of worship, and of praise. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is from the Scots Confession of 1560. And shall we stand together as we affirm our faith using these words. We confess and acknowledge one God alone, to whom alone we must cleave, whom alone we must serve, whom only we must worship, and in whom alone we put our trust, who is eternal, infinite, immeasurable, incomprehensible, omnipotent, invisible, one in substance and yet distinct in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, by whom we confess and believe all things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, to have been created, to be retained in their being, and to be ruled and guided by his inscrutable providence for such end as his eternal wisdom, goodness, and justice have appointed, and to the manifestation of his own glory. Amen. You may be seated. Seated. <clears throat> As we come now to a time of prayer together, <clears throat> Lynn Gray has asked us to pray for Jim Cromer, um, who... Um, has had surgery and is experiencing some rather severe side effects from that sur surgery. Um, Casey Link has asked us to pray for her sister, Sharon, who has surgery coming up on Tuesday. In addition, um, please remember um, Neil Oliveri. Please remember Stacy Winnicky, uh, Matt Winnicky. Um, in Stacy's passing. Um, also, Jerry Alexander, as um, he and Pat as well struggle for the next step um, in Jerry's care. Um, this is a very um, difficult time uh, for them. Um, and Carol Dean, who um, has been in the hospital, has surgery, and is, uh, she's now at home. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you this morning with joy and celebration. 
for this is a special day. We remember our heritage and we celebrate our heritage. We remember that the roots of who we are were brought to us from all the way from John Calvin through John Knox and all the way to this to us this day. As we remember that heritage, Lord, may we also remember that ultimately we are your people. Ultimately, our unity is in your Son, our Lord, that our life and that which defines us has been given to us in your Son, our Lord. May we find that though we are diverse in things from opinions to heritage, May we find the unity, the commonality that comes from knowing that we are your people and that our call is to service and to praise and to worship. We lift up this morning those whom we have named, asking your healing mercies for those who are recovering from surgery, your guidance as tough decisions have to be made by others, and for your comfort and your love for those who grieve. Those whom we do not name, Lord, but hold close in our hearts, we ask the same from you, knowing that your love is for all. As we go forward this day, Lord, may we hear clearly the call to service. May we stand firmly on the truth of who we are. We remember all the saints that have gone before us till we come to this place this day. And we stand firmly on the truth of your love in Christ that sustains us and guides us and fills us. In Christ's name we pray. Who, Christ who taught us to say when we pray together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are indeed people of gratitude and praise. And so, out of hearts filled with gratitude, let us bring to God a portion of all that God has given to us.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. Gracious God, we truly come today with thankful hearts, thankful for all of your goodness to us in Christ, the life and love that we share together here in this place in him. We pray, dear Lord, that you would strengthen us as your family, as your people, that we would every day be a means through which the life of your son is seen and experienced. Continue to draw our hearts ever closer to each other and into you, that in this we might find our deepest joys. We thank you for all that you do and continue to do for us in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. My friends. It is a glorious day. I've said it several times. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep saying it. It's a glorious, glorious day. This is what I'd like you to remember as you go out into the world. The foundation on which you stand does not waver, for your lives are in Christ, and your identity, the one you cannot ever shake, The one that is you, the way God intended you to be, your identity, is solid and established. And as I said, it's true. Wait, I want you to do something for me. I want you to turn and look at one another. Just look. Don't be ugly. Just look. Yeah. Anybody see anybody that looks exactly like them? No. Okay. Anybody think there's anybody here this morning that thinks exactly like them? No, I'll tell you that one. (laughs) No, but we are, we are bound together in a way that, that supersedes all of our diversity. In fact, our diversity strengthens our unity, and you know this. So as you go out from this place, remember who you are, remember to whom you belong, be joyful, celebrate, serve, and praise the Lord, for that is who we are. And as you go this day, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each of you this day and for all the days to come. Amen. to meet you. May the wind blow at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face.
Thank you, sweet love. Okay. I just love the way that looks out there, Jack. <laughs>